Billy of Bartis. Finally, the night of the great palace laugh-off arrived. Funny people from throughout the land, funny talkers, funny walkers. Some people who just looked funny assembled at the palace to perform before the toughest audience of their lives, the princess. Princess, the people to make you laugh are here. What people? The funniest people in all the land. I've had them rounded up, and the throne room is awash with wackos. This had better be good, Dad, or I'm coming straight back to my room. Trust me, sweetheart, these guys are great. Shall we? No tricks. All right, now, before we get rolling here, I'd just like to see how well you people can applaud, okay? Let's put our hands together and give us a round. Come on! Hey, you in the back, man! It's really here! Come on! Right, you're a beautiful audience. Now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest hosts for this evening, you know them, we love them. Let's have a royal welcome for the king and the princess. Come on! My loyal subjects, life without laughter is like a dinner without wine. Normally, it's not necessary, but a little now and then probably wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Anyway, my daughter here desires some amusement, and so, uh, for her benefit and the benefit of us all, let the laugh-off begin! Barry! Our first contestant is one of the brightest stars of the new comedy, coming to us from the Forest District, where he never fails to make an impression. I give you Mockingbird Maurice. Hey. Your seriousness before I begin, may I say that it is my greatest wish that my humble talents will be sufficient to make your daughter laugh. For I can think of no greater blessing than to have this beautiful creature as my bride. Are you mad? Daddy, what's he talking about? Uh, I meant to tell you, uh, whoever wins the contest gets your hand in marriage. It's the standard arrangement. You mean the moment I laugh at this jerk, I gotta marry him? Stop projecting. Just relax and watch. You may make us laugh. As you know, there's a saying that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and this means I've been flattering the nobles throughout the kingdom for a few years now, and I think it's about time some of them started to flatter me back. Well, I know that right out here on our stage, a really fine young mimic from the forest region, really here in Toronto. He makes me proud to say that I was once the king. That's because he's not from my kingdom. Honestly, the kid's terrific. Even my manservant Rochester likes him. The kid is good. He's very, very good, sweetheart. Hey, yo, your majesty, what do you think? You should go out with him, maybe get a little bite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, cause he's a little buff, yo. So until next week, your humanlessness, uh, let me say, nano, nano, he's <laughs> mine. I tell you, I get no respect. I don't know respect at all. I'll be appearing next week in the dungeon. Thank you very much. You don't seem to be enjoying this. I can't believe that you would do this to me. Barter me off like a piece of property. But princess, I did it for you. I wanted you to have some amusement, to enjoy the, the funniest comedians and the finest material. In order to get that, I had to offer my most valuable possession. <sighs> next. Our next contestant has created big waves in the lake region. <laughs> we don't know when they let him out. We never know what he's going to say. Let's get ready for William the Weird. Here he is. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing a strange hat. Well, I don't know. It just seemed to fit, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's amazing what you can do with a little imagination and your very own rat tail brush. For instance, um, maybe you've seen uh, in your garden this almost extinct creature. 
roaming around. A unicorn! Oh. <laughs> or perhaps we can take a look at a map of the world as we know it. <laughs> Uh, out there in the chicken yard, you have seen this creature <laughs> roaming around looking for a bite to eat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, your seriousness. Um, you know, I didn't actually make her laugh, but she did smile a couple times. Maybe we could just go steady. <laughs> what do you say? Lose it, Barry. Uh, <laughs> in the dungeon. <laughs> he was rather funny. Yes, Dad, he was very funny, but I don't want to live with him. I'm not sure that I could live with any comedian. Underneath, they're probably all neurotic. Just try to have an open mind. Barry, who's in our third slot today? Our next contestant needs no introduction. Mr. Ambassador of Comedy. His humanitarian work entertaining our boys at the Crusades is legion. <laughs> not to mention his many plague benefits. He's a talented surf and a beautiful human being. I give you Phlegmatic Jack! Yes! Your Highness, fair princess, my comedy is at your disposal. <laughs> and now, on with the fun. Shall we start with a riddle? What did the one-eyed frog say to the crocodile in the pond? Well, that's just a small sample of some of the hell there. A funny thing happened on my way to the palace. A beggar approached me and said, Sire, can I have 200 quid? I said, what are you going to do with 200 quid? He said, what do you care what I do with my money? <laughs> <laughs> my girl is so fat, when she sits around the house, she sits around the house. <laughs> There's a joke comedians will be using thousands of years from now. <laughs> Heck, my girl is so ugly, I take her with me every place I go. It's better than kissing her goodbye. How dare you treat women with such disrespect? Princess, please. It's only a joke. Yeah, well, I'd rather die serious than live the joke a life with you would be. I'm going to my room. Princess. <laughs> <laughs> 